I never worked with Substance Painter. Uh, how much uh, to harm did it take to learn it? I know the material rules. I mean, I read Substance PBR Guide. Um, how much time did it take to learn it? Um, I, I was taught it in a class, and I think our substance, like the amount of time we had to learn substance was like five or six weeks. So that's that's how I learned. It might take more time. It might take less. There's definitely plenty of tutorials out there that could teach you it like a little bit quicker and better. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Uh, four years, experience, just about to learn. Kaylin, you feel a lot of experience on here. I guess, I mean, I guess. <laughs> hey, gonna have to go here, do some IRL stuff, and maybe sleep a bit. So, good night, Kaylin. Good luck with the project. Sweet dreams for when you go to sleep and all that. Good night, chat. Have a good one. Keep safe. Well, thank you, Pedro, for stopping by. I'm glad you could make it. And thank you so much for the kind words. I hope you have a good night. Oh, and I gotta and I gotta save. After the stream? What's after the stream? I know I still have a shrimp god for after the stream. This doesn't need to be pretty because this isn't really going to be seen by anyone anyway. gotta ask shrimp god for sweet dreams my church friends would kill me for condoning the worship of a shrimp god <laughs> have you done any work with ui i have not um that is something that kind of eludes me a little bit
I'm slowly getting into it. I enjoy the design process. Yeah, I've I've never even really touched UI to be honest, like UI design, anything like that. I know there's like a good career in it, but just is not for me personally. I've only done uh, like one UI design thing and it was creating a menu. I thought I was going to hate it, but it was really fun to make. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm just trying to get as much experience in everything game design so that I have a higher chance of being hired over other candidates in the industry. I'm just jamming as much information as possible in my head. I enjoy learning new software and it helps to be into it. I was anti-programming when I first started, but I'm getting into it. I will say, I will say, and this is just a little bit of advice. I've kind of given this to my students as well. And I've said this previously. Um, 
unless you're looking for like a generalist position, sometimes, and this is advice I've gotten from like industry professionals as well, like people like leads and directors and stuff, and even like, you know, recruiters is, you know, it's good to have that kind of versatility, but sometimes they're looking more that you have one specific focus than anything else. So like my entire portfolio so far has just been hard surface stuff. Um, and so like they, a lot of the times they would rather see that you have one specific thing that you're focused on and that you're really good at than having an array of a whole bunch of different things. Unless again, you were going for a generalist position or something along those lines. That's just what I've been told and kind of what I've experienced. Um, and it, at the end of the day, it is also like a little bit redundant too. Cause I will say like, I have super PBR hard surface stuff and both of my jobs in the industry so far have been like stylized, stylized like props and cosmetics. <laughs> so it's, it's not always the case, but I have, yeah, Frankie. Yeah. I've been, I've been told a lot that like, if you're going to apply for a hard surface position, only have hard surface stuff in your portfolio. If you're going to apply for environment stuff, only have environment, characters, characters, that thing. You can have multiple things in your portfolio. And if you're using something like ArtStation, it's always good to have those like broken down into different like categories. Like, you know how you can kind of put your work into collections. Um, so if you wanted to have multiple of one thing or multiple of like different things, that's fine. But yeah, if you were to do that, I would recommend kind of categorizing them into the different sections instead of like just having a typical art station homepage where it's like everything that you've done and it's not categorized into what specifically you might be applying for. Um, let's see. Yeah, I've been told that too, my portfolio is mostly 3D art because that's what I'm aiming for. But I've also heard that like, it's good to showcase that you know more because if they ever needed an extra hand, they wouldn't need to hire someone else. I have different portfolios based on my different skill sets. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I, I will say that like getting into doing extra work that isn't potentially in your job description or your title should be like you should be compensated for that. You shouldn't be doing extra work that you weren't necessarily hired for, but that's, that's just me, <laughs> you know, it might be, I mean, if you want to take on the work, you can. And obviously if you're trying to break into the industry, it's, I guess it's all right to be like ambitious, so to speak, but yeah, I would just be careful with that personally. I like the color variation breakup on this roof here. Very yummy. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm really liking the, the, the different colors on this. Is it eight o'clock? Let's see. What am I going to stream for two and a half hours? Just get this shrine, get this shrine finished, put it back together in Blender real quick, and then peace out probably. Maybe like another hour of work, hopefully, give or take.
Again, please bear with me. I'm texturing this entire thing with a mouse. made a paper mache girlfriend. Nice. It's pretty sick, honestly. Or like origami. <laughs> she's not that hot though. Don't say that, that's mean. I'm sure she's gorgeous. 